You know, just after the Second World War, a bunch of Southern California hot rodders used to congregate on some of the dry lakes in Southern California to sort of test their cars for maximum speed. And this evolved into a, a land speed record sport that established itself around Bonneville, Utah, a dry lake bed, it was ideal for this kind of record testing. Famous names like Breedlove and Gablich and Arfans took automotive technology to speeds that was never considered possible. Now I'm with Rob Frivo, but he's the president of Carbonite Metal Coatings. And Rob, I am sitting inside uh, the, certainly the fastest vehicle I've ever, I've ever driven. This is a land speed record car. How fast can this vehicle go? This car is designed to be the first wheel driven car to be 500 miles an hour. It's very top speed that can ever achieve will be 550 miles an hour. At that stage, the air underneath the wings will go, will go mock and it'll be a mock bubble and it'll stop us from going any faster. So, oh. But the current record that we're trying to shoot for is the fastest wheel driven car, which is 4, 458 miles an hour. Now that's to give folks a sense of how fast that is, typically. Uh, an Indy car might go, perhaps might 215, 220 miles an hour. I think uh, these days a funny car can go 280, 290, and this is this is almost double the speed of some of the fastest race cars on the planet today. And this is a wheel-driven vehicle. What powers this? It's a twin turbocharged big block Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. It's 540 cubic inch. There's really no more Chevrolet parts in there. It's a Chevrolet architecture. Mm -hmm. It's all aftermarket. Mm -hmm. And it'll make approximately 2,600 horsepower at 30 pounds of boost and 7,200 RPMs. So 2,600 horsepower, and that's that's really gives you a sense of that scaling notion of aerodynamic drag going up with the square of the speed and uh, and horsepower required. The general rule of thumb by the cube of the speed. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So 2,600 horsepower to go that fast. And how long would a typical speed run be? It'll take about 60 seconds to run a full five miles. Mm -hmm. We go run the six and a half mile mark. The last couple of miles go by in seven seconds each. So <laughs> at, at top speed. So. Now I understand that um, to negate wind effects, you're required to turn around and do it in both directions within a prescribed time period. That's correct. We have one hour to turn the car around to go back the opposite way uh, through the same section of real estate. To, and you're clocked over the full mile. It's not just a top speed that you achieve, but it's an average speed that you achieve through a whole mile. Mm -hmm. I'm inside a cockpit here that's very well triangulated. It's very securely welded here. What are the co materials construction techniques? This, this has a bit of a funny car feel or a ta rail feel about it. It does have a little bit of a rail feel to it, but we actually build it much stronger than the regular rail can be because mm -hmm. we're not as concerned about weight as the, the drag racing cars mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes actually a little bit of weight is good for you for, for stability in mm -hmm. this aspect. Mm -hmm. Now this car looks like a needle, but this is not a motorcycle or a three-wheel car. This has four wheels, in fact. You're saying the front wheels actually are solid. They're, they're not rubber tired. They're solid rollers in the front because mm -hmm. at a 21-inch diameter tire we needed to achieve this body style. We can't get to find a 21-inch tire that'll live underneath that speed. So mm -hmm. we just turned blank rollers up, you know, out of a billet mm -hmm. and did a finite element analysis study on it to make mm -hmm. sure that they will not come apart at speed. Yeah, Rob, of course, we know that the minimum frontal area is always a goal, minimum wetted area is a goal. We still have to package you, that big block behind us, of course, and all the necessary structure to, to make all this work. This went, but what's notable about this is compared to, say, Formula One technology, uh, I don't see any vortex generators. I'm not seeing any sophisticated or, or odd devices controlling boundary layer, redirecting flow. This is good old-fashioned aerodynamics. Yeah, this is, we're trying to achieve laminar flow as far as possible. So we don't mm -hmm. want anything like a vortex generator trip flow uh, mm -hmm. like, like it would. Mm -hmm. So um, we're trying to separate the air as easy as possible and bring it back together as easy as possible with the fastest, easiest transition and uh, with a minimum amount of wetted area. Mm, has the needle sort of the needle nose shape and the uh, the, the tail? Correct and, and yeah. actually the truth be told this looks faster than a shape that would actually be faster. This this aspect ratio of this car is about nine to one mm -hmm. for length or for width mm -hmm. and it would be better about four or five to one but it just doesn't work out well for the axle height and everything else in a packaging reasons. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Rob, certainly uh, those historians will see in the old photographs know that uh, some of the original Lakesters actually used drop tanks, aviation drop tanks from B-38s and structures like that. That was one of the easiest ways to achieve a good shape was to start with a drop tank. <laughs> now, Rob, uh, you're a person car carbonate metal coatings. Uh, this is radically different from the things you do at Carbonite. What got you into LSR? Mm. We had a real slow year one time and I took it on as a project manager to handle a car for another customer that was out of the country. Mm. And um, Things went real well with the car as far as our success, but we decided we didn't want to do this for customers anymore. We're just going to do this on our own. So we started playing with it ourselves. That's fantastic. And what class does this car run in? This is double A blown gas streamliner. 
And that's important to us to get that class record, but not nearly as important to ha have the ultimate wheel-driven record. We're going after the fastest wheel-driven record and the fastest piston-driven record. F fastest piston car right now is 439. The fastest wheel-driven car is 458. Now, if from a safety perspective, of course, we don't want anything to go wrong in here. Uh, and this is a very robust roll cage we're surrounded by in here, but is, is this a survivable structure if things go squirrely? Yes, it's probably one of the strongest structures ever been built. Uh, one thing we did different there was this top bar that comes down through here. You mm -hmm. notice these bars are straight all the way here. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the energy coming in straight into this bar, if the car flips up hard on this roof, mm -hmm. is gonna go all the way back, all the way to tie into this bar and the floor bars. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit stronger than a regular funny car roll cage. Yeah, so it's quite triangulated. I can see every, every, every way I look. That's remarkable. Rob, when do you expect to, to make the record attempt? I understand in Bonneville right now, salt conditions are poor and they've been poor for some time. They have been. It's something we're really struggling with because um, imagine building a project for five years and getting ready to run it. And next thing you know, there's no place to run it. So we did find another dry lake bed out in Nevada and we're going through all our testing stages out there. Because like any new build, you have to work through all your teething problems. And we hope to have that all done then. We've been 360 in the car before. The next couple weeks, we hope to be 450, 4, 425 to 450. Uh, at that stage, we'll have a good, um, you know, uh, a good opinion of where we are with the car and, and and what needs done with the car. So when August rolls around for Speed Week, we can basically unload and go get the record. Rob Freivogel achieving the fastest ever speeds attained by a wheel-driven vehicle and going after the record at Bonneville.